yeah. you know, yeah. and being a non-dancer, it seems to me that I'm I'm more in my head when I'm dancing, when I mm. try to dance, mm. I should say. Yeah. And then I, you know, you get in your head and you think, am I looking foolish or am I out of beat or you know that kind of thing. And if you, what you're saying is, if you don't worry about that and you just get caught up in your your emotion and, and the little voices in your head that maybe prevent you from feeling sure um, could kind of go away absolutely I mean I think for most of us as an audience the the people that really you know are riveting and draw us are the people that connect to your heart yeah. so whether or not they're shorter or wider or all of those things become less important and if they can move you and take you on a journey and get you ignited to go somewhere that's what people want to feel that's what people want to be involved in so you know everybody's got a everybody feels good everybody feels bad everybody feels disappointed so that's a commonality that we can bring in as far as communication when you're designing movement on somebody that they can relate to you know, you're, that's leading me into kind of like the objective. As, as a master dance teacher, what is it that you want to impart upon your students? But before we get into that, I just want to remind people that are just tuning in that we're talking about the Master of Dance seminar that's going to be taking place on May 10th at the Walter Pyramid on the campus of Cal State University Long Beach. And with me are two of the Master Dance uh, instructors. And uh, they're just talking to us about dance. Mm. Now, when we talk about... Um, your objective as a teacher, you know, most teachers should have an objective when they have a group of students in front of them. What is it that you want to get across? You, you talked a little bit about getting the dancer to understand that it's more about emotion and to, to feel, feel something inner mm -hmm. within themselves. But what else could we talk about so that the, the, the viewer gets an idea of what they're going to get out of this, this experience on Saturday, May 10th? Well, I, I mean, I can definitely say for, for me at the end of the day, what hopefully they'll be able to leave with is having had a moment that allowed them to celebrate authentically whoever they are and whatever that shape comes in. Um, so, yes, technical things are important to me. There'll be other classes that will hone in on that probably more than I will. But, you know, at the end of the day, they will be able to leave and go home and talk to their friends and you know talk to their mom and their dad about how they got to like be encouraged to be and just to to you know be free yeah that's really what my objective well, and is that's, in your class is a it's called a lyrical uh, dance approach so what does that mean you know I mean it's an interesting term in the commercial world it has uh, sort of less of a voice uh, than it than it has had in the theater dance, in the dance company realm. Lyrical dance is really uh, classically based, meaning ballet based, where movements are longer and have more sort of melody to them mm. than hard hits, okay. much like sort of hip hop does. Okay, I got you. Um, but also, in, you know, for me, inside of lyrical becomes the uh, storytelling. Okay, so it's yeah. a little more free form, but it's not it's not that it's not based on some kind of... I wouldn't say it's free form, um, but it, it, it's more lyrically stylized. Okay. Okay. Which said nothing different than what you asked me. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just a groovy It's classically form of dance, stylized. You know? No, no, it's no. Kind of it's classically stylized. Like yeah. So, so that lines get longer. They're more longer <laughs> neck lines, arm lines. You cover more space. And, it, and again, it's really sort of the melodicness of, of movement. Okay. Yeah. Like I was saying before, my, my choreography is typically more um, uh, percussion mm -hmm. oriented. And, uh, or, and so it, uh, visually, it's more of an athletic style. Okay. Um, and lyrically, would more, be more the, the upper levels of the music. Okay. And the more melodic. Um, Beautiful. Shall we show them? Should we show them? Oh. And, uh, yeah, no. okay, go for it, guys. <laughs> well, he touched, really <laughs> he touched on a really good point, I think, earlier. He touched on a really good point that um, I think dance as an art form is storytelling. Yeah. And um, so we, are, we try to train our bodies uh, to be able to tell our stories more fully. Okay. Everybody has a story. Right. And, and uh, dance is an interesting way to say it, to tell the story, because you're not using words. You're just okay. using, and so anybody can understand it, anybody in the world, regardless of the language that they speak okay. or, or what neighborhood they grew up in. And uh, so... There's a lot of different stories and interesting stories. Every single person has that story to tell. So I think one of the objectives of mods, of, of, of mine anyway, is to be able to inspire each person that's there to be able to tell their story more fully and in a, in a um, 
in an art form that is to me is really important and very uh, extremely creative yeah and um, and one that's not limited to any one area of society everyone can dance you see little babies in the in the thing dancing oh, you know what I mean and, so and, uh, and you see yeah, you see an old couple that's been together for 50 years and they and they know their movements and they know yeah. each other so well it's it's such yeah. a beautiful thing and so I think dance is a universal language and a universal art form that yeah. can be um, that hopefully we're just bringing it to the bringing it more to the everyday person. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, you know, it's funny. I look at my parents when they dance. They just know how to dance together. And yet our generation, at least my generation, we just didn't focus on it unless there was some kind of mm -hmm. an interest, you know, an internal interest. And, I, you know, if you didn't have that, you didn't learn how to dance. And mm -hmm. it's just so humbling to watch older, the older generation really know how to make these steps. They're less inhibited, and we're just so mm -hmm. caught up in it. So this is a, a great opportunity to come and learn lots of different dances, be free, not feel foolish and have a lot of fun. Absolutely. Well, and I think also the the gift of the teachers that are here, I know from Aaron and for Nathan as well, having worked with a lot of celebrity dancer types, they've gotten used to s designing movement that fits the individual's abilities, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which, as Nathan says, everybody can dance. The thing get, comes down to trusting what style fits you and and serves your own sort of physical structure and your emotional structure so not everybody needs to be a dynamic jump in the air kick their leg around right. but some people can dance and just get into creating shapes Beautiful. and those shapes are still dance which everybody can do Mm -hmm. I would love to talk to you guys more about this. Unfortunately, we have to wrap things up. And I just want to remind our viewers that this very exciting event with these two master dance instructors, and uh, amongst others, will be taking place at the Walter Pyramid on the Cal State Long Beach campus on Saturday, May 10th. If you want to know more about it, please log into modsuniversity.com and sign up and come on down. We're going to have a great time and learn how to dance and have some fun. It's going to be fun. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Thank you. Pleasure. All right.